another game which is perhaps less uh, less August in its pedigree um, or identity uh, is another game from oh I'll have to look at the time or the, the date of publication but from Death's Edge Games comes Inferno. Hmm. I heard of it. Yeah, it's a it's it's obscure is accurate. Ninety four, same year as the Whispering Vault. Uh, hmm. yeah, here we go. There. So, see that? Ah, yes. Okay. Well, so um, now that I've snarked, surprisingly, Inferno has a lot of good ideas, and mm -hmm. uh, you can play. It, it's set in hell. Mm -hmm. And it's one of three or four games from the mid-90s that are set in hell. Um, mm -hmm. And of them, it's the one that I actually sort of said, hmm, you know. Partly is that it actually embraces the silliness a little bit. Mm -hmm. the, the, the picture that I just showed you is, it's kind of like, you know, let's be a little ridiculous sometimes. It's okay. And I kind of appreciated that. But the um, the important point about it, though, is that the characters are the player characters are kind of exactly what you described for psychopomp mm. um they are helping people in hell mm -hmm. um right. and they are in many ways drawing upon their hellishness on one fashion or another especially because oh. a lot of them are dead uh, a lot of the character you don't have to play a dead character right. you could play a living person who's there or you can play a character who is dead and in hell. Mm -hmm. um, you also can play a demon called a hell spawn, an imp, or um, okay, I think those are the only the only other ones. You can play a dead person or a live one. You can play a necromancer um, or a priest. Mm -hmm. um, there's races and classes, but anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but the point being that you have. Uh, these beings and the presumption is that you're up to something together that you kind of can all get behind for one reason or another you know an innocent soul has wrongly been sent to hell you're going to rescue it uh mm -hmm. characters are attempting to uh it's it's kind of it's i guess it's kind of catholic-y in mm -hmm. sort of the oldest sense because you can get out. A character can get out. There's sort mm -hmm. of, you know, the 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 for all eternity clause has a couple of you know loopholes or a couple of ways out gotcha. of it, and so you could be helping somebody do that. Um, then there are characters who have, like you have described, have sort of embraced their status there and have built little kingdoms of hell of their own, and they're very villainous. So okay. you know that's why I said you know that I was looking at Inferno and I was going hmm. Drawing on some common literature, some common films, some common comics, you know, we're, we're working from the same cultural mind here. Right. Um, so, uh, so I bring that up. Uh, Inferno has many, many things about it, which are very much of its era. Um, but it also has an aspect of what you want to do with your character in the long run. Do you want to let go of, just like the Whispering Vault, you, know, you could stay in there, you know, hero pitching from now on because you're a player character and that's what I came to do. Or you could say, you know, part of my saga is that I will be letting go of all this in a gradual way as I proceed. I don't think Inferno does it in as nuanced a way regarding memory as any of those other games that I talked about. Um, but the process is at least part of its picture. Yeah. And the exact situation has a lot, you know, a lot to think about for your game. Um, so anyway, those are the, the I, I, think I, kind of, I think I named four. Um, those are the games that I kind of had in mind to kick around. Here's the question that applies to all of them, and it also applies to you. And I hinted at it a minute ago. How genuinely edgy are we talking about? Eighteen-year-old you had a great time coming up with Psychopomp, even, and I, I maintain that even if you came up with it after that, eighteen-year-old you was still involved. You're right. Um, yeah. But, uh, but clearly, eighteen-year-old you really, really liked this. 
Mm -hmm. um, well, looking at it now, what just just how you know how edgy is this self indulgence going to get? And mm -hmm. I would maintain that, at least from my aged perspective, I actually think more is better. Mm -hmm. um, really, I mean, if we're talking about a traverse through monsterdom, you know, with monsters to fight, World of Warcraft is over that way. Right. So what else is being done here? And um, I should put at the far end of that spectrum, Les Mons Marie, which is one of the most outright potentially damaging uh you know in in the emotionally you know role playing games in history it is mm -hmm. utterly ruthless and your character could very well be an awful being who does awful awful things mm -hmm. and is not <laughs> there is no redemption in Le Marie yeah, you know every every character is a candle burning at both ends, and every character, you know, flickers out probably. Um, and so uh, the 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 notion is just how hypocritical and vile and beautiful are they mm -hmm. in this confectionary existence that each one of them has. Mm -hmm. I mean, depending on what you do with it, you. And in our game, as I recall, I mean, I, I found myself saying, you know, man, you know, what, how much, how much misery are we really about here? Right. Um, and so, uh, on the other hand, if you go, you know, down the list of the games that I was looking at and you get pretty much to Inferno, which doesn't go all the way, but it, it, veers more toward a little bit more humorous satire and black comedy along the way, you know, or in there or possible. Yeah. Um, but even those have their content, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, so I think that's, that's really the question for psychopomp. What is it that the, what is the, the place along that spectrum of drama grandeur certain level of metaphysics mm -hmm. uh fascination with death mm -hmm. um to what it, you know how much of that is just reminding us of games and movies that we already know mm -hmm. and how much of it is you know diving into it to just wallow around in it mm -hmm. you know oh my dude's dead an undead vampire fuck yeah that's the best superhero ever <laughs> or is it or then when we talk about another kind of wallowing which is kind of uh the the <laughs> I, I could snark at that a little bit you know i mean although i've written games of this kind and played games of this kind extensively i can still snark at it and say yes yes we're playing a role-playing game and then we all solemnly look at each other and reassure each other that yes although it is true that we were all going to die and this game may have reminded us of this, that it's really okay. <laughs> and we have to have that conversation. And that, yeah. that seems like a little much to expect. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that, yeah, because um, when I was first developing the game, or first, like, developing the internal of the idea, like, I wanted, and I still think I want this, is a, like I was, I was interested in stories that, like, uh, either literally or metaphorically dealt with Alzheimer's disease and, um, like, grieving and loss and people whose like families members had died and seeing them go through that and stuff. And I kind of wanted to make a game that like churned players from, you know, having some semblance of their life to, to like having to have it stripped away. And, and so I'm going for pretty grim dark, but I feel like that that can edge over into some pretty silly territory pretty fast. And well, not it can, but the uh, but it there there's is a level of black comedy to which all of these games definitely hit sometimes. Yeah, and I've actually often found it to be relatively productive. Mm -hmm. Um, and some people say, well, it's tension relief. I'm not quite sure it's tension relief. Sometimes I think it's actually a little more profound than that. 
mm -hmm. um, that uh, the the absurdity or grotesque funniness of some of the things that these characters get up to or find mm -hmm. themselves in um, have a certain pathos to them. You know, it's it's kind of like the indignity of death actually is an important thing to acknowledge right. rather than just, you know, wandering around gloomily in the Gothic cemetery all the time. Right. Um, and so it it's really hard to say. One thing I do know is that trying to preset precisely how people are going to experience and play doesn't work very well and yet strangely enough all of the games i've mentioned have very very consistent results so that i really feel justified in characterizing playing these games mm -hmm. yeah so in one way i'm saying let people do as they will and yet on the other hand i'm saying that the game designed in a particular way will foster a particular approach